My name is Rapsony. Welcome back to Slay the Spy for the Daily Challenge for the June 10th, 2020. We've got the character, the Ironclad, the modifies Heirloom, Controlled Chaos, and Lethality. Uh, heirloom, start with one rare relic. Controlled Chaos says start with... Oh, and this area is blank for some reason. At the start of your turn, add 10 random cards to the bottom of your draw pile, and Lethality, you start each combat with plus 3 strength, and so do your enemies. So especially as the Ironclad, we know we're going aggressive with this. Ooh, Ice Cream! Energies are now conserved between turns. Hmm. I don't know how well a setup play is really going to work when after you go through the first... Oh, oops. Let's go for those. When after you go through... Oh, we have three extra strength. We could have killed you. I don't know how it's going to work when after you go through the start of your deck, you just get random cards constantly, so... How can you really plan for anything? Bloodletting, Anger, and Clothesline. I'll take an Anger there. Just free damage for us. Upgrade the Bash, definitely. Alright, Anger, where are you? You did turn up in that hand, but just a little late for me. I'll take Cleave for some AoE. Heavy Blade really wants you to have a lot more strength than we currently have. I'll remove a Defend from the deck. Go to a shop and then take a sword boomerang happily, as well as a shrug it off. Nice! Good shop right there. Really wasn't expecting that good of one. Alright. Guess I'll shrug it off. So I'll still be on full health by the end of all this. Shuriken, whenever you add, uh, sorry, whenever you play three attacks in a single turn, gain one strength. I'll take a spot weakness so that all the strength synergy cards I'm picking up are going to be a little bit better for us. I'd also really like a, uh, really like a feed or a reaper or, not the shrug it off there, definitely. Feed, reaper, limit break. Obviously great here as well. Wake the enemy up on a turn with a bash, I think. I'm just going to save extra energy with the ice cream here. Two, three, and then play the sword boomerang last because you get the best benefit from getting the strength and we get the strength with the previous attacks. Nice. Kunai, every time you play three attacks in a single turn, gain one dex. So, oh, there's the Reaper. It's up against Twin Strike and battles, uh, Battle Trance here, though. Honestly, I don't think we're ever going to take enough damage to need that Reaper. As long as we end the fights as quickly as we intend to. And I think Battle Trance is key in helping us do that. Matroshka, the next new non-boss chest, you hope it contain two relics. Then let's upgrade Sword Boomerang to hit an extra time, which is super impactful. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. We can do twenty-eight damage right now. We can't take out that sentry. So I'll split the damage elsewhere, just in case I get another AoE card. Which I do not. You're kidding me. That literally just hit, had to hit the back line once. And all four of them hit the front line. So that's a 50-50. Then another 50-50, so it's 25. Then another 50-50, 12.5. And then another 50-50. So it's 6.2... Uh, what? Hang on. 12.5, 6.75. Wait, no, 6.25. 6.25% chance for that to have worked out like it did. Well done. You got me. Pommel strike. Iron wave scales with both shuriken and kunai. Actually kind of interested in that for that reason. Take the money there, and then a gremlin is shuffling some cards madly. Power through is totally fine here. So would another anger be. Power through is incredible because those... Uh, do I start taking curses now? No, because I'll always see them really early. Power through is incredible because I never see the curses. Uh, sorry, the curses, the wounds. They just go back.
Which is to say they just go into the discard pile and then I never reach the discard pile. Okay. There we go. Easy kill on you in a few moments here. Oh, Sword Boomerang is such a great pickup for this deck. Flex. Honestly, makes a lot of sense. Because we're going to pick up a lot of strength synergy cards, so we might as well have a flex. Not a great strength synergy card for us. Alright, if I'm not going to do that much this turn, I'm going to save the energy from this turn. One, two, three. Okay, so we have a battle trance in the next hand. Spot weak. Okay, yeah, we'll wait for that. Battle Trance, Spot Weakness, Attack, Strike, Strike, Sword Boomerang for the kill. Swift Potion's great, so is Limit Break. We'll drop the Elixir to take the Swift Potion. No longer being able to smith any of the cards is rough. But I guess I'm never seeing that Limit Break again anyway. Sure. I'm not going to take the Snack away there because of the Battle Trance and the Flex and just a couple low-cost things I already have. Anger. Yeah, Battle Trance Flex. We only have one two-cost thing in the Bash. Uh, and a second in another Bash as well. I forgot that we picked up a second Bash. Kind of just wiped it from my memory because I wasn't really keen on it. I'll take this really early shot, and then we're taking a path through all of the elites that doesn't go... Nice. Uh, we'll take a path through all of the elites that doesn't go through that many fires. Because I don't need that many upgrades. Or rather, I can't get that many upgrades. Is what I meant. Take a Warcry pre-upgraded, sure. I like the Molten Egg here. I'm going to be picking up a lot more attacks. Take that and then an Iron Wave. I like Iron Wave with the Shuriken and Kunai. Like, a hell of a lot. The scaling is so good. Let's Flex, Bash, Sword Boomerang, Anger. Oh, I was actually planning to end that with a Thunder. Sorry, with, a, with an Iron Wave. Although, I will now take a Thunderclap. Quetstone upon pick up upgrade to random attacks as well as the Elbing's Boost Stone. Have one dex. Start of each combat game, one dex rather. Not too much I get to do about the 30 damage we just have to take here. I'm not going to attack again now. Rather just save the energy for this turn. If we didn't have the power through, I'd feel really good about that clash right there. But we do, so I don't. I'm gonna go for the extra draw really quick. Oh my gosh. Let's go Blessing in the Forge, Spot Weakness, Limit Break. Cleave for approximately all of the damage. And then take the rest of the damage back. Preparation of that rage, though. It's like a wild strike just for the huge hit there. We just can't afford to be just one attack away from killing. As many times as it feels like we are. Should have just used the Iron Wave and just planned to kill this turn instead. Speed Potion. Okay. Rampage and Heavy Blade. It's also an offering there. Uh, I mean, we are going for rare cards already. We have the Limp Break. We may as well take the offering. I was going to try and justify taking the Heavy Blade instead. Obviously not the Rampage. Never getting back to my discard pile, so I'll never see it again. Letter Opener, as well as the Scene Bowl. Whenever you play your third skill in a turn, deal... 
five damage to all enemies, as well as whenever you uh, add cards to your deck, you may raise your max HP by two instead. Oh, I should have limit break before that. Oops. Not that it will matter at all, but still should have. Headbutt, Perfected Strike, and Clothesline. This one's going to be health for us, I think. Headbutt's not bad, I guess. Alright, try that out. One, two, three, kill. This is pretty much exactly how I wanted these hands to go, just instantly killing all of the enemies. We thought overwhelming amount of strength on turn one. And even better than that, we're also finding ways to defend ourselves whilst doing it. Although we are going to have to scale a lot faster if we want to be able to take out bosses. A lot of that could come from potions. These potions aren't going to cut it though. We at least managed to get the kunai and shuriken proc there. Fine, if I've got a limit break first, I will. And then I'm just going to full defend rather than try and scale. Should be able to kill this turn with a decent draw. That will count as a decent draw. Spin strike is great. We also have wing boots, so we could travel to a different area. I'm fine with just going straight, though. I'm going to use the wing boots next floor to try and... Next act, rather. I'm going to use the next act in order to try and get as many elites as possible. If we end up perfecting this boss, we might try and play more defensively next floor. Because then suddenly perfecting all the bosses is back on the cards. Had kind of already foregone the possibility of that in my mind. Attack potion's pretty good. Another thunderclap or a body slam. I mean, we do suddenly generate a decent defense out of nowhere. We could take a body slam. Drop the Essence of Steel for a Plated Potion. I mean, if we're going to kill any of the bosses really quickly, might be the Collector. I can use the Engine Potion to keep my strength from this turn, the Flex Potion strength. Okay. I'll do it. Just because it'll make the limit break draw much better than it already is. Three. Extreme overkill on those, but wanted to be comfy with it. So we already have the full block here. Perfect. Yeah, we can get the perfect here as well. Uh, so what would be the best boss next floor to give us a possibility of doing the same thing again? I honestly think Donu and Decker could be it. Options are okay here, but I don't think it's that important. None of these are really super fast. I'll take the Impervious, just defend us on one turn. Limit our card selections is a bit harder to take here. I think Slaver's Collar is okay. We're really good at clearing out normal floors already. Okay. 
Might have been too ambitious for that turn. Hey, another wild strike. No, sorry, another wild strike, another uh, shrug it off. Uh, I'll lose a defend happily there, actually. I kind of want all of those removed. Mm. One sec. So if I take this, I can go here, remove one of the normalities, then jump to you in order to kill an elite, then jump to you in order to kill another elite, go all the way up to here, and then jump to you finally to kill another elite. And that gives us the ability to get the 999 gold as well as remove one of the normalities relatively early. How much more powerful am I going to get against the bosses? Sorry, uh, with the money, how much more powerful am I going to get? Or rather, do I get more powerful with the fighting a boss from Act 1? I'll take the money. I mean, I could hop there and then hop there. So I, I could cut out one elite in order to remove both of the normalities really quickly. I'm actually into that. Very into it. Also take the anchor for block on turn one. Pommel strike for double draws. Well... Violence is also pretty good here. Put three random attacks from your draw pile into your hand. And then we'll go here and remove another normality. We'll get another pommel strike. Another pen nib. A master of strategy. I'll take a chemical X for the possible whirlwind that we might get. Because if we see whirlwind, we're definitely taking it. So we might as well get a little bit prepared for it. I'll take a block potion for the final fight. And a panacea. That's it. Trying to play as many cards out here as possible. Okay. Impervious is a lot of damage with the body slam. Thank you, Flex. Showed up at pretty much exactly the right time, bud. And we managed to full defend based off of waiting for the kunai triggers. Awesome. Blue Candle on playable Curse Guards can now be played. Not going to be trying to use that to... I'll take an Entrench there, actually. Uh, I'm not going to be using that to try and play out the normalities. Although, it would have been interesting had we gotten to show that off. I'll drop a speed potion for a weak potion. Instantaneous impacts on the board are more important to me right now. Thought I had one more energy there than I did. Guess I was just used to the previous fight already. Wasn't even in the previous fight for that long. Pommel, obvious. Pick up right there. Pair for a little bit more max HP. Uh, if I could find a way to buy some more max HP in the final shop, that would be really good for us right now. Bottled Lightning, upon pickup, choose a skill. Start each combat with that in your opening hand. Let's take another offering here. Blood Potion, probably not. Bottle. So the bottle, I really want to put the Limit Break in the opening hand. But I also like, like, Violence or just Master of Strategy for a bunch of extra draw. Offering is extra energy and extra draw. Let's take that. Okay. 
Trench, Bash, Body Slam, and then just... Pummel. That'll do. So I'm going to want to try and leave this fight on a pen nib of 10. Sorry, of 9, rather. Art of War, you don't play any attacks during your turn. Gain additional energy next turn. I'll take the Fear Potion. I think it's probably time to take Heavy Blade as well. Ooh, Transient. So in this fight, I think I pretty much just prioritize trying to get Kunai and Shuriken Triggers because you're know, digging for more cards than playing more cards. It doesn't really matter that much to us. Because we're not going to plan on killing this enemy. It's not really that viable. So I want to play nine more attacks before the end of this. Violence is going to be really handy in that. Okay. Five more attacks this turn. I'll settle for the three. Flex potion. Probably more impactful than the attack potion there. Got nothing we can really do at rest sites anymore, so you might as well go for the fights. It's just war cry, basically nothing here. Fiend fire looks pretty good for killing a single target, I guess, especially if I use these pommel strikes. There we go. Karen's Ashes, when he uses a card, deal three damage to all enemies, as well as another twin strike. That's a collector's bonus for us now as well. I like the idea of taking those rages. It's just, I think, with the shrug it offs that we already have, I, we just don't need them. Fine wave, power through, body slam. Can I kill you in three more attacks here? Um. Two, three, I can. Now we've got the pendant for the boss fight. Iron wave. And we'll rest before this one. Gonna take me a moment to figure out what I'm doing here. Let's put that back at top of the deck. Alright, there's our full defense already. Short ourselves one draw there. Okay, I'm gonna flex potion. And I'm going to pummel Donu down. Monster Strategy finds the ability to kill Donu right now. Draw more cards. Flex. Twin Strike. And then let's let loose a pretty large Sword Boomerang here. Yep. I was pretty sure I was going to be able to kill them all on turn one. That ended up with a Beyond Perfect. One, two, 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 two. Obviously, I didn't go for every Collector's bonus. Uh... But we did still end up with a 43 card deck. I think the only bonus that I got was on Shrug it Offs. And I was pretty close to getting on an Iron Wave and Twin Strike as well. Yeah, we got the Shrug it Offs. Two Pommel Strikes, two Offerings, three Iron Waves. We had no Curses as well. Do we get I Like Shiny? 5, 10, 15, 20, 24. We were one short from I Like Shiny. One Twin Strike. I would have taken two more Sword Boomerangs had I seen them. But honestly, for a 24-minute daily that was hyper-aggressive, managing to beyond perfect all the bosses is pretty good. Yeah. I'll happily take my 12th there. Just 
500, 500, just 50 below burst. So this extra competition in between here is, is probably just card choice. And then up here, this is probably, you know, picking up curses as well. Maybe holding the two normality curses in the deck until the very end. Well done to y'all and your patience. For the moment, though, my name is Brun Rhapsody, the name of the game. It's been Slay the Spire. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.